diseases your cats can give you. Toxoplasma gondii is one of my favorite infectious diseases, not only because the pathology is very interesting, but because it's transmitted by some of our favorite companions, our cats. As a matter of fact, it has been estimated that about 80% of US cats have been infected at some point with toxoplasmosis, and about 30% of humans in the US carry it asymptomatically. Of course, those numbers are estimated to be even higher in people like me who live with and care for cats. Luckily, this infection is largely asymptomatic in people with strong immune systems. However, this infection can present huge problems for people who are immunocompromised, like people who have HIV. Let's talk about how this is spread. Toxoplasma gondii is a small unicellular protozoa that looks like this under the microscope almost like little kind of bananas. Your cat can become infected with this disease when it eats something like a contaminated mouse or bird. Alternatively, the cat might have eaten food that was contaminated with inactive Toxoplasma gondii cysts. You can almost think of these like little inactive eggs of Toxoplasma. The infection then passes into the intestinal epithelia of the cat. From there, the infection will reproduce and it can shed its oocysts into the cat feces. These cysts can survive in the environment for up to two years and can actually survive for several years if they're in cold water. So these cysts are super tough and can survive in the environment for a super long time. And let's say you're cleaning your cat's litter box and after that you don't wash your hands very well or maybe not at all, and then you go to eat some food, you can unknowingly contaminate yourself with these cysts. So these cysts then enter your digestive tract and instead of killing the cysts, your stomach acid will actually cause them to sporulate. Once in your small intestine, the infection will actually pierce right through your enterocytes and either choose to infect the enterocytes or infect the underlying immune cells in the tissue. So here we have toxoplasma, it enters the enterocytes and then it finds its way into the immune cells. Now this part is absolutely fascinating. Toxoplasma will then use your own immune cells as basically a Trojan horse. It will travel to and infect any other part of the body. Eventually, the immune system is able to catch on to the scheme and suppress the infection, but not before it's spread to many different tissues in the body. For instance, here we have a specimen of heart muscle. These are all cardiomyocytes. And here we have an intracellular cyst full of dozens of Toxoplasma gondii bradyzoites. These will stay for the lifetime of the cell or even one day reactivate.